Good evening, G4 News Philippines. Another breaking news has been reported this evening. There are numerous environmentalists that have been observing negative conditions or floras. According to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, there is a great possibility that these negative issues or flora can turn into a massive destruction of all plants if left unaddressed. Moreover, these issues were due to the normal process of nitrogen and sulfur cycle. Let us hear the report of Gwyneth about these cycles. Thank you, Alfea. So the nitrogen cycle is the repeating process in which nitrogen in different form moves both living and non-living things in the atmosphere, soil, water, plants, animals, and bacteria. It includes five stages known to be fixation or volatilization, mineralization, nitrification, immobilization, and denitrification. 78% of the Earth's atmosphere by volume is made up of nitrogen. It surpasses the volume of oxygen, which we thought of as our air. Meanwhile, the sulfur cycle describes the movement of sulfur through the atmosphere, mineral forms, and through living things. Although sulfur is primarily found in sedimentary rocks and seawater, it is primarily important to living things because it is a component of many proteins. Increase of SO2 or sulfur dioxide can also be possible via volcanism as they release hydrogen sulfide which becomes sulfur dioxide and also via factories which releases sulfur dioxide. Back to you, Alfea. Thank you very much, Gwyneth. Now that we have deeply understood these contributing factors or negative issues in the flora, let us hear from PJ on the effects of the nitrogen and sulfur cycle. Thank you, Alfaya. There are two elements which achieve the effects of the nitrogen cycle, namely humans and environment. Some have even suggested that alterations in the nitrogen cycle may often lead to an increased risk of parasitic and infectious diseases among humans and wildlife. While in national marine system, it increases in nitrogen can often lead to anoxia, means no oxygen, or hypoxia, means no oxygen. Altered by diversity, changes in food web structure, and general habitat degradation. One common consequence of increased nitrogen is an increase in harmful algal blooms. Nitrogen is arguably the most important nutrient in regulating primary productivity and species diversity in both aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Sulfur cycle can irritate the respiratory tract from the nose and then generally move into the lungs, where it attacks more vital and sensitive tissues. High sulfur concentration has caused numerous air pollution disasters, characterized by higher than the expected death rates and increased bronchial asthma cases or incidences. Therefore, one infamous effect of the sulfur cycle on our environment is the appearance of increased amount of acid rains due to high concentration and large emissions of sulfur dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere due to the numerous human activities and the inevitable source usage, of which can be harmful to the soils and different uh, landforms. Moreover, one third of all sulfur release is due to the human activity, particularly burning coal and oil, which produces sulfuric acid, ref refining sulfur containing petroleum, mining, and converting sulfur containing metallic ores into pre metals like copper, lead, and zinc. Thank you so much, PJ. We can clearly see that nitrogen cycle and sulfur cycle affects both living and non living things positively and negatively. In this case, the nitrogen cycle enables the production of substances used by the residents, but we can also see its effects when neglected, as it can make changes in the food web structures and can cause respiratory disease to the residents. Threads, any updates about the concerning effects of nitrogen and sulfur cycle so flora? Thank you very much, Drew. We are now currently on call with Secretary Lee, as she also had a cabinet meeting for this matter. We have asked her about the effects of these cycles to the flora and according to her, flora refers to the plants occurring and or existing within a given region, as well as to the publication of scientific descriptions of those plants. They are different from popular monuments in that they attempt to cover all of the plants rather than only the co most common or conspicuous ones. Dear Secretary Lee, 
to discuss the effects of nitrogen and sulfur. Without amino acids, plants cannot make the special proteins that the plant cells need to grow. Without enough nitrogen, plant growth is affected negatively. With too much nitrogen, plants produce excess biomass or organic matter, such as stalks and leaves, but not enough root structure. In extreme cases, plants with very high levels of nitrogen absorbed from soils can poison farm animals that eat them. Secretary Lim, how about the effect of sulfur? Sulfur is one of the components that make up proteins and vitamins. Proteins consist of amino acids that contain sulfur atoms. Sulfur is important for the functioning of proteins and enzymes in plants, and in animals that depend upon plants for sulfur. Plants absorb sulfur when it is dissolved in water. Animals consume these plants so that they pick up enough sulfur to maintain their health. Thank you, Secretary. As of the moment, the state of the flora has been gradually dying due to the loss of nitrogen and sulfur. Experts and botanists have been checking up the amount of nitrogen and sulfur in these terrestrial plants and concluded that the decreasing amount of nutrients has been the cause of their decline. The government stated that they will seek intervention for the problem. Back to you, Jewel. Thank you so much, Fred. And thank you to Secretary Lim. Local government unit in Manila have been facing mostly issues in the flora. Here's a live interview for Mayor Mark for implementation and project as a solution and prevention. Let us hear from Christelle. We are here live on call with the mayor for an interview about his implementation to address harmful issues in floras in the city. So, Mayor Tabangkula, we know that it is important to know these issues rising in the floras, but how can we prevent it and how can it be an alarming matter? Good day! Knowing the two aforementioned is a significant matter in order for us to be generally aware regarding how such cycles affect different aspects of our planet. Prevention of these cycles is not necessarily the answer or the key to a more healthy environment, but rather the proper, responsible, and ecological use of resources is the way to the betterment of the ecosystem's functions and stability. What can be considered alarming is when humans remain responsible in utilizing these resources. Thank you very much, Mayor Tabangkura. Back to you, Alfea and Jewel. Rao was tough and we really need to address this matter as soon as possible. Yes, indeed. This is Jewel de la Cruz. And I am Alfea Alcala. We'll be back with more news updates in an hour. Keep it here on G4 News Philippines.